Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome back and this is lecture number 42 and we will uh, continue our discussion on vector spaces again. In particular uh, today we will be talking about the uh, basis of a vector space and also uh, the dimension uh, of a vector space. So just to recall from the previous lecture, so we have seen that these vectors, the set of these three vectors uh, 1 1 1 and 1 1 0, 1 0 0 and 1 0 1. These four vectors form a spanning set of R 3. The meaning was that any element of this uh, vector space R 3, we can write as a linear combination of these four vectors. This is what we have seen in previous lecture with the help of this augmented matrix which we can uh, get out of this linear combination equal to this v1, v2, v3 and uh, from this uh, augmented matrix when we reduce to this rho echelon form we observe uh, the following. What we have observed that there are uh, these three pivots in column 1 we have pivot in column 2 also we have pivot column 3 also has a pivot while the column 4 does not have a pivot and this is what we call the free variable. So, the lambda 4 in our combination when we have taken uh, with lambda 1 uh, with this vector the given vector v 1 lambda 2 this given vector v 2. So, we call this v 1 uh, v 2 v 3 and v 4 and this lambda 3 v 4 uh, v 3 and lambda 4 v 4 is equal to uh, this given vector v which we uh, have taken here the v1 and v2 and v3. So, with these uh, system of equations what we observe that this lambda 4 is free variable is free variable and meaning that we can assign whatever value we want to this lambda 4. So, now we have the flexibility to give this linear combinations here. So, choosing a different value of lambda we have a different a linear combination that uh, will give us exactly this uh, vector v 1, v 2 and v 3. So, this forms a spanning set because any vector, any arbitrary vector we can pick from this R 3 space and we can write down as a linear combination of these given uh, four vectors. What is interesting here that we have a non-unique representation because of this free variable. So, when we have a free variable we can assign any value we want to this lambda 4 and then our representation of this given vector will also change. So, this linear combination will also change. What was also seen in the previous lecture that if we if we do not consider for example, this vector the fourth one. If we do not consider this vector that means we will not have uh, this column here, this uh, column uh, we can delete now. So, in that case this was the situation and uh, what we observe now for this case that we have the every uh, column has a pivot and there is no free variable. Meaning, when we do not have a free variable we will get basically the unique representation, the unique uh, solution of this system. And this is what we will discuss today that having these three vectors we have a spanning set having these four vectors that also form a spanning set. Then we will come up for with the idea now that how many actually minimum uh, vectors do we need so that we can uh, span the, the, the given vector space. So, for instance in this case we have observed that 
taking these three vectors, we can span the whole vector space. And also, the moreover, the main point is that we have also the unique representation of the uh, vector from R3 if we take these three vectors. But if we are taking the four vectors, still it is forming a spanning set, but we are not getting a unique representation. So, keeping these facts in mind, now we will continue with the definitions of uh, the bases and, and the dimensions. So, the basis is a linearly independent set that span a vector space. So, the simple definition, it is a spanning set because uh, it should span the whole vector space V, but what is in addition that the linearly independent set. So, the basis is nothing but a spanning set which has all linearly independent vectors. That we call basis. Like in the earlier example, we have a possibility in this spanning set taking all those four vectors or taking only those three vectors. And, but if we take those three vectors, uh, we can easily figure out, out there those vectors are linearly independent. But having those four vectors in the set, the set becomes linearly dependent. That also we can observe with the with the uh, theory we have already developed in previous lectures. So, those three vectors they are linearly independent and for those vectors we can call that they will form a basis not the four vectors because four were also a spanning set, but that will not be the basis of uh, R 3 in, in that example. So, now the dimension. So, the number of elements in a basis is called uh, the dimension of the vector space. So, here the number how many elements are there, how many elements are there in that basis that is called the dimension of the vector space. So, these two numbers are the basis that is the set of the vectors and that is that is span the given vector space and this number here which is which tells about the dimension of the vector space both are, are very important. Just a note here that every vector in V can be written uniquely as a linear combination of the basis of vectors and this fact also we can explain from the previous example itself that when we have uh, the basis there, the basis means you have linearly independent vectors and when you have linearly independent vectors, there will be no free variable when we talk about that linear combination of the given vectors to represent a vector from this V. So, that representation will be also unique whenever we have the basis our, our spanning set uh, is, is, is having linearly independent uh, vectors then the representation will be also unique. And the vector is space uh, 0. So, this is a special uh, case when we have only one element that is 0 and we define this dimension as, as 0. Okay, so, let us take the example here the vector space R n which we have already studied. Now, we will uh, talk about what are the basis of R n and what is the dimension of uh, this vector space R n. So, we consider these vectors now a very special vector which we call the standard uh, basis of R n. So, consider these vectors E 1 is denoted when the first component is 1, all other components are 0, E 2 is the first component 0, the second 1, all other 0 and in E n we have this nth component as 1 and all other components are 0. So, in this way we have defined these elements, these elements are from R n of course. So, now we will uh, notice here that these vectors are linearly independent first that we can easily uh, check out and we have I think uh, checked before as well. So, we have to just see that lambda E 1, uh, lambda 2 E 2 and so on lambda n E n when we set to the 0 vector 
then we should get out of this that lambda 1 is 0, lambda 2 is 0 and all are this zeros which we can easily see because of this structure here itself we will get uh, from this lambda 1 0 from here we will get lambda 2 0 and so on. So, this is trivial to see that these vector these set of vectors uh, form a linearly independent set. So, all these vectors are linearly independent. What else we have to observe? So, we have to uh, we are going to find the basis and the dimension of the vector space. So, for that we need a spanning set basically that can span any uh, that uh, can represent any vector from our uh, vector space in the form of this given vector. So, whether here it is possible or not we will check now. So, given these vectors here and vectors are given and now any element if we take from this r uh, n. So, any uh, this is r n. So, this is the element of this r n. So, if we take a, a general uh, any any vector from this r n and which we are calling here v 1, v 2, v 3, v n, then we, we can see that we can represent this vector with the help of these given, uh, given vectors e 1, e 2, e n. The idea is again simple in this case and that is what these are called the standard basis. So, this v can be represented as the v 1 times this e 1, the second component v 2 times e 2 because of this special structure here it will be multiplied by v 1 and nowhere else we will get anything at this place because all other vectors have 0 as first component. For the second v 2 only the e 2 has 1 at the second place all others are 0. So, naturally we will get just v 2 from this one at the second position and so on. So, we can represent or we have already represented here any vector v from this uh, r n as a linear combination of these given vectors e 1, e 2, e 3, e n. So, it satisfies all the properties of the basis we have uh, this is a spanning set because we can span any vector of the given vector space in the form of as a linear combination of the given vectors and also these vectors are linearly independent. So, they form the basis. So, we got a basis for this r n this uh, set of vectors here this forms a basis for uh, r n and the dimension now it is a number of uh, these elements in this set. So, here we have e 1, e 2, e n there are n elements and we got uh, therefore, this dimension here of this uh, vector space is n. This example where we are talking about the vector space of all uh, 2 by 3 or in general also we can discuss like for r by s matrices. So, for simplicity let us take this 2 by 3, but the idea we can extend for r by uh, s matrices as well. So, here the vector space of all 2 by 3 matrices we are talking about and uh, if we consider this vectors here the 1 at this position and all other positions are 0. Similarly, now at the second position is 1 all others are 0 and so on we continue with this we get these 6 matrices where this 1 is, uh, is sitting here at the first position only in this uh, uh, matrix. In the second case 1 is sitting here and all others are 0 and so on. With this special structure again these are the standard basis for, for this uh, vector space of this 2 by 3 matrices. We have already seen that this form a, a vector space in the last lecture. So, here we are talking about or finding the basis and its dimension. So, these vectors are linearly independent and span the vector spa, uh, vector space of 2 by 3 matrices. Why they are linearly independent? Again the same argument which we had in the previous lecture. So, if we call them uh, vector v 1, v 2 and this v 3 here this is v 4 and v 5 and v 6. And again the same thing we do that we, com we take here this linear combination v 1, v 2 uh, with this uh, lambda 6 and v 6 is equal to 0. Uh, this is 0 matrix here. So, this is nothing but the 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 
when we compute this lambda 1 v 1 lambda 2 v 2 and lambda 6 v 6 we will get a matrix here with lambda 1 this is lambda 2 lambda 3 lambda 4 and lambda 5 lambda 6 is equal to 0 and now comparing these uh, entries there we will get lambda 1 is equal to 0 lambda 2 is equal to 0 lambda 3 is 0 lambda 4 is 0 lambda 5 is 0 lambda 6 is 0 so they are linearly independent vectors so these are linearly independent vectors the second we have to check that they span the vector space of this matrices 2 by 3 so naturally they do because if we consider any any vector uh, any matrix from this 2 by 3 matrices or the elements we, we call uh, vectors only so anything we we take here for example 2 by 3 so this is a general matrix from this space uh, 2 by 3 and with the help of this given vectors we can easily expand in terms of uh, uh, like a should be multiplied to the first one now and this b should be multiplied to the second one and so on if we continue this so that is the representation now of this general uh, vector from this uh, vector spaces and that shows that we can represent any vector from this uh, vector space in terms of these given vectors which are 6 in number so what is the conclusion that these vectors form a basis uh, for the this vector space and the dimension is nothing but uh, but the product here 2 by 3 or uh, we have the 6 matrices so the dimension is 6 which we can generalize for r by s matrices also the idea is same <coughs> another example where we are talking about the vector space uh, this pn of all polynomials of degree less than equal to n again this example we have seen that this form a vector space and now we are talking about this set here uh, 1 t t square and so on t n so these n plus 1 polynomials right these are n plus 1 polynomials we have taken and we claim that this is a basis actually for for p and t and why this form a basis the reason is again clear we have to check that these are linearly independent which we can uh, check as uh, we have done for other examples lambda 1 times 1 uh, lambda 2 times t lambda 3 times t square and so on uh, this will be set to 0 and this is only possible when all these lambdas are 0 so naturally these are linearly independent uh, vectors of p and t the second we have to check that any polynomial from this p and t we take can we represent uh, that polynomial with the help of these uh, these vectors so again here if we take any polynomial let's say this a0 uh, a1 t a2 uh, t square that's a general polynomial we have in this uh, space p and t they are the polynomials of degree less than or equal to n so for instance we have taken this general polynomial and with the help of these given polynomials we can easily uh, uh, use this so a0 will be multiplied by this 1 and this a1 uh, with this uh, t here a2 with this t square and so on so that is the linear combination of these uh, uh, given vectors so we can represent any element of this uh, set or this uh, space here p and t uh, as a linear combination of these given vectors so therefore uh, this set forms a basis for p and t again which uh, we will also come later on uh, to more clarification the bases uh, are not unique so this is a set which form a basis we are writing a basis there can be other set which can also form the form the basis like uh, in the example of uh, uh, the first example which we started with uh, we had those three vectors which form the basis and they were not the standard basis so we can also choose for example 1 0 0 and 0 1 1 for r 3 and this 0 uh, 0 1 so that will also form uh, the basis for r3 and the uh, example we have seen those 1 1 1 that was one vector another one was 1 1 0 and the third one was 1 0 0 so that was 
not the standard bases, but they were also the bases. So bases are not unique. We can have a different uh, sets. The main properties are the elements must be linearly independent. That is one property, and the second one uh, should be that uh, they they should span the whole uh, vector space. So here we have seen that these are the bases for this P and T and the dimension here the number of elements in this basis which is n plus 1 uh, at present. So, we have the dimension n plus 1. Another example where we will revisit the our problem here A x is equal to 0 uh, this system of uh, homogeneous uh, linear equations and we know that the solution set of uh, of a homogeneous uh, linear system also forms a vector space. So, here the A was this one, this example we have already discussed before with this A and we can reduce it to this echelon form, row reduced echelon form and which uh, tells us that these x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 by choosing because we have to we have free variables here. So, this is pivot here, there is a pivot, there is a pivot, but this column does not have a pivot here also it does not have a pivot. So, we have to choose this x 2 and this x 5 as uh, as free variables by choosing these two as alpha 1 and, and alpha 2 we can uh, compute all other x 1, uh, x x 1, x 3 and x 4 and when we combine we got uh, this uh, equation here that x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 are nothing but alpha 1 times this minus 2, 1, 0, 0, 0 and alpha 2 times this vector. So, what we observe that with the help of these two vectors we can generate the whole set whole solution set of this A x is equal to 0 because we need to just keep on changing these alphas the numbers here and every for any alpha here whatever we choose uh, this is uh, the solution of A x is equal to 0. So, all possible solution of this A x is equal to 0 we can generate using these two vectors and these two vectors looking at them we can easily identify that these are the linearly independent vectors which we can formally also prove we know with the help of this linear combination set to 0 and that will imply that those coefficients lambda 1 lambda 2 is equal to 0. So, these two vectors are linearly independent and their linear combination we can generate any vector of the solution set. So, that means these two vectors form a basis because that is the property of the basis we can generate any uh, any element of this uh, a solution set with the help of these two or as a linear combination of these two two vectors and uh, these two vectors are linearly independent. So, they span the solution set and these two vectors are linearly independent and therefore, they form a basis. So, these vectors can uh, the vectors that generate the solution are these and this and these vectors are linearly independent. Therefore, these vectors form a basis of the null space. Yeah, remember. So we call this solution set. Uh, there was a special name uh, which we call null space. This is a vector space which is called null space. So these vectors form a basis for the null space of A, and the dimension of this null space of A in this particular case, it's two, which is again has a name. It's called nullity. So nullity is nothing but it is the dimension of the null space of A. <coughs> there are some useful uh, results based on uh, the observations what we have uh, regarding these bases and the dimension. So, let V be a vector space of this finite dimension n. So, the dimension of the vector space is n, then any n plus 1 or more vectors in V are linearly dependent. So, that is another nice results. We are not going to prove all these results, but one can uh, with the help of some simple examples one can at least uh, get some idea that how these results are true. So, here any n plus 1 in the in our example also which we started uh, with this lecture today, uh, we had those 4 vectors 
but uh, they were linearly dependent and uh, that was a spanning set, uh, but it was a linearly dependent set, therefore it was not a basis. So, their vectors were 4, while we have seen that taking those 3 vector first 3 vectors that form a linearly independent set and also a spanning set. So, that was the basis. So, the vectors in the basis were 3 there for R 3 and so, if there are 4 vectors uh, which span R 3, they cannot be there, there cannot be a basis because uh, 4 vectors from R 3 they have to be uh, linearly dependent. This is the result here. So, any any n plus 1 or more vectors we take in V, there must be linearly they must be linearly dependent. So, for a vector space whose dimension is n, we cannot get more than n linearly uh, independent uh, vectors, they will be linearly dependent if we take any n plus 1 or more. Any linearly independent set when n is a basis of uh, V with n elements is a basis. The another beautiful result that we do not have to worry about picking, picking up the elements for the basis, we can take any n elements, but that set should be linearly independent. So, any set which has n linearly independent vectors that will be a basis, because for the for the basis uh, these uh, will automatically uh, will be the spanning set, we pick any n vectors which are linearly independent that will be the basis. And any spanning set v 1, v 2, v 3, v n with n elements, so again the same thing uh, it is a spanning set uh, with n elements, so that will be also the basis. So, if a vector space has finite basis, then all of its bases have uh, the same number of elements. That is another beautiful result that uh, if, if we have the n uh, number of uh, uh, elements in the basis. So, whatever you have different different set of bases, but they will have the same number of elements because that is the n that is the dimension. So, whatever basis uh, we take the dimension uh, is n of the vector space, then there has to be n elements in the set and the number of elements in any basis of a vector space is called the dimension which we have already uh, discussed. So, for instance, we take this example of uh, uh, 4 vectors and they forms a basis of uh, R 4, the set this forms a basis of R 4, while the note that the given vectors are linearly independent that we can easily check they are linearly independent uh, whenever we have such a special structure. So, all 1 and then these 3 1s, 2 1s and 1s. So, they form a basis uh, which we have seen for, for instance in the case of this R 3. Uh, so, this forms a basis because these are linearly independent and we know that the dimension uh, of R 4 is 4. So, we do not have to check, we have to check that they are linearly independent and they are 4 in number because the dimension of R 4 also we know. So, if we have 4 linearly any 4 linearly independent vectors from R 4, not only these 4 vectors, we can pick any 4 linearly independent vectors that will form a basis. So, here uh, the given uh, vectors they are linearly independent and then there it has to be a basis because the dimension is 4 and we have this 4 linearly independent vectors. Consider these four, 4 vectors in this R 3. So, if we consider these 4 vectors uh, from R 3 and we know the dimension of R 3 is 3. So, when the dimension is 3, these vectors must be linearly dependent, they cannot be linearly independent because if they are linearly independent, then they can form a basis uh, also if, if they are linearly independent and they span the R 3, then they can be also a basis, but basis will have only 3 elements, not more than 3 elements. So, here we have 4 elements. So, definitely they are linearly dependent, which we can conclude uh, from the dimension uh, of R 3, which is 3. So, this cannot have the basis cannot have 4 elements uh, in, in, its, uh, in its set. Okay, so, the conclusion is that we have the dimension, which is the maximum number of linearly independent vectors in a vector space V 
and the basis is a set of linearly independent vectors that span the vector space. So, these are the references here used for preparing the lectures and thank you very much.